Okay, so now we're on to part two of this mini course, and this is what I'm calling virtual displacement. In other words, we're using displacement maps to create actual geometry. So this is where we left off before, and there's a couple things I want to point out, noticing there's some questions about some of this going on. And if you look at this model, you'll see that there is detail coming straight down from the top, but there's also detail on the sides of this model as well. And some of you are saying, well, wait a minute, I can't get detail on the sides, and why is that? Well, let's take another uh, better look at what we're doing here. So I'm gonna come over here, and this is, this is the model before we've actually virtualized it. And if we look at this, we'll see that we have our subdivision surface set at seven. I can set it higher, but we'll keep it low just so we can see it and understand it better. And if you look, that displacement is coming down from the top and changing everything, and there's nothing on the sides. So how do we get stuff to be on the sides? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. And if I look at this surface, let's look at these coordinates, right? So we have coordinates right now, and we have local and direction is normal. Well, we only have one normal, because don't forget, this is a single plane. So there's only one normal here that is available to work with. And that's the reason why we're not able to get any sort of detail on this side. Now, later on, we're going to talk about how we can actually start to wrap some of these textures around corners and around shapes. But for this exercise, we're working with a single plane. So let me go ahead and turn this back on. So how then do, do we get this? Well, the way we do that, and I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and apply this A displaced texture that we created last time. So now you can see we have stuff on the sides. And let's take a look a little closer at what we've got going on here. So first off, if I just take this, you see that this node right here represents the actual image. And don't forget, I just held the control and shift key down, click here, and that bypasses all this and lets us see up here in the viewport, uh, if you have Node Wrangler turned on. So what you can see here is that this shows you the actual displacement map as it's put directly on. And how do we know it's directly matching perfectly? It's because we don't have anything hooked up to this. And if I hit Control T, notice nothing will change. And that's because we've added a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. And this is UV, right? So when this is gone, then this is just assuming that we're, it's using the UV coordinates. So let's keep that in mind. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to match up exactly the texture we're using in the displacement map, texture map, that is going to apply to the surface. And that way we get these dark areas down low and the high areas are up top. So how do we get the images across the sides? Well, uh, let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead first and go back to here. Because you can see now we have stuff on the side here going on. Okay, so let's take a look at another material. So I'm going to go over here and let's just look at their image editor. And we want to look at this one. Remember, this is that displacement map we used uh, to help colorize. It's the exact same one as this, but it's got a color component to it. We'll go back to the 3D viewport. And as you notice, I'm going to go ahead and control shift and click right here on this texture map node, which is that one. And as you notice, look at this. All the stuff is coming around on the side just fine. What's going on? The way this works is we're using another node and we have the same mapping stuff going on here for the most part. I'm going to talk a little bit about the scale, but we also are using an object vector and you could use generator object. I'm using object because I know that this A displays, I'm going to duplicate this material later on for smaller objects and I want to be able to scale that or keep it the same depending on the smaller object. So, so this object texture coordinate plugging into here allows me then to do some different things. And in particular, what it does is it allows me to use this right here, this box mode, which is a uh, kind of a cubic projection. So it goes from all different angles. So I've got this set to two. And don't forget, this value is controlling the X, Y, and Z. So if I make it bigger and smaller, I'm able to control how that goes. But as I move it, you know, in any direction, you'll see that it's going down the sides just fine. It's moving around just fine. So let's go ahead and put that back at two. And I'm going to hide this plane and turn this one on. And let's go back in and control shift on here to get rid of that. Now we can see this. Look how nice this is This is rendering. Let's go to our camera view. You know, you can see it's rendering quite nicely. It's important to point out is that what we're doing here is we're creating a lot of kind of greeble effects, high frequency texture. And the purpose of this is as a background for something else. It's not as an end unto itself. 
And that's kind of a mistake that I and others continually make is that you get very excited about it and you go, there's no real single focal point in this image, but it's just all a lot of cool, you know, eye candy. And that's really not the point. The point is that what we want to do is we want to create a texture or a canvas so that we can put other stuff on. And so this stuff will eventually float into the background. And we'll talk about that later on as we go. So this is kind of what we're after. This is a, a render of this exact same scene. And I'm going to actually include a lot of the assets that you see here so that you can create your own things like uh, this carrier bot here and all these little buildings and this parallax shader that uh, Greasy Bear so kindly donated to the cause. He's got this great K-Pack that you might check on. It's called Sci-Fi in a Box. And it's brilliant. It's got lots of stuff. It's got a lot of hero elements and hero elements are really going to be critical. And that's what we've done here is we have this big landing area, which is kind of in itself its own hero element. And then we've got characters and people and and a couple little, you know, some, some, some things that we can focus on antennas and things like that. So it's not really all about all this other stuff that's going on around. It's about, you know, what we're going to do with that. And that's a key component and a key thought as you're, as you're trying to compose your scene Keep that in mind. So we're back here, and now that we understand this whole idea of you know, wrapping stuff around edges, what we also want to do is we want to kind of get a little more detail easily, right? And so I'm going to show you a way to do that. And what I've done is I've taken this, remember this, this is our color node. This is our yellow and color displacement node. And I've added a color ramp to it, and I've added a bump and a bevel node. Now, to get those, you just you do Shift-A, Search, you say it'll type in whatever you know like bump and you'll see that and then you can move it around and then of course x deletes it so i know this color space should be raw here but if i do that it changes everything up here quite a bit as you can tell so i'm going to go ahead and leave that srgb and i'm going to put it through a color wrap which is going to turn that so if you look at here you know that's the color put it through color wrap now it's black and white so now this is going to be a bump map and i can adjust this however I want with these sliders. Oops, there we go. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. It's actually pretty good. And then I've added a bump and notice how tall. Normally you use very small numbers here, but I'm using very large numbers. Remember, this is a big scene also. Keep in mind that, you know, this object is 136 meters, you know, tall. Remember we scaled it based on these little characters right here. So it's a huge scene. I took the output of this and put it in this bevel node. And then I'm going to use the bevel to put a tiny little bevel on the edges of this. You could do that or not. It doesn't matter. Remember, the bevel node only works in cycles. So if you're going to do it, these are the settings that I like. You always, I would always recommend at least 16 samples for your bevel. Something that happens during the rendering process, you can bypass it without any issue. And I'm going to do it real quick, and we're going to take a look and see what we have. So once I bypass it, I get this kind of ugly looking thing that doesn't really work well at all. But... If I go into cycles at this point, now, because of these super high numbers, look how nice all of a sudden all this color detail has become. I've got really nice little parting lines and areas that help define what's going on on the sides of these, you know, of this displacement map. Look how nice that is. So that's step one in all of this is to add this Basically, add this color app, a bump, maybe a bevel node. If I put the bevel node on, you know, we'll, we'll zoom up on something like this. And you'll see, now you see I've got this little kind of a bevel there. And I'll turn it off. If I bypass it, I don't get that. So that's what I'm using the bevel node for, just to get a little kind of a, a little bump there. So, and that's really where we want to kind of start this whole process is let's add this color app, this bump, and this bevel node. Let's get some of this detail on the sides. <laughs> 